I have a list of 13 to 15 songs that I'm trying, going to try to record. Basics, basic track. Hold that thought, because we're going to talk sports, and then we're going to come back to okay. your album. We're going to come back to the Ken Seltzer album. Johnny. Yes, Joe. How are you? We're going to come back to the Ken Seltzer album after we talk. You're Ken Seltzer's Great. dream come true because he was in his car listening. I had to pull him out of the car to sing the first it, song. It was it was four to two when I uh, turned it off. Fortitude. Oh, uh, yep. <laughs> Fortitude. That's how they got to. It's in the third inning and they're still batting. So Johnny, what's the name of your sports blog? Uh, uh, hold on. Sports talk with Johnny the Kid Byers. Okay. Go to Google people and put in. John from Medford, and you'll actually get a drop down. Mm. He's that famous. And it says John from Medford, or you'll get a drop down for John from Medford, W E E I. Yep. So uh, our director, who's Jeff Deerman, is not here tonight. I talked to him earlier before calling you. Oh, you talked to Jeff. We're going to be getting together soon, and we're going to be putting plans into place to bring uh, my, my ill fated sports talk show that uh, died in Medford. Uh, Winchester after. Resurrection Great. here in Winchester. Great. And your first guest, can I say his name? Yes. Damon Amendolara. Well, that, that ain't, that ain't put, uh, definite yet. Once we get the show up and running, then I'm going to I'm gonna contact him. Damon's already been on his show. I, I, I have, uh, He's 98.5, the old BCN. Oh, okay. All right. It's now uh, 98.5 FM. And um, right. we, we taped, uh, John interviewed Larry Lucino. Mm hmm a week ago Wednesday, it was when, the 25th, and Steve Pagliuca, but you talked to someone else yes, off I camera. I did talk to uh, the owner of the Bruins, uh, this was off camera, and uh, I basically asked him, was this the year that we were going to break the 38-year curse of the, of the Jacobs family? No. Uh -huh. hmm. That's a tough question, Johnny. Well, The other night they played fantastic. You you gotta say it was a terrific hockey oh, I game. I didn't watch the game. I just caught. That I watched. I watched the game, Johnny. It was a terrific hockey game. You gotta give them their, their. No team could have beaten Vancouver that night. That was a magnificent hockey game. Did you see it? No, I didn't. No. It was terrifically tense. That's the one they lost one nothing. Yeah. Uh, Eighteen. Both left. teams were battling. Both goalies were like. Knights in, in armor. What you call it. Huh? They were standing on their heads. They were, um... They were, they were just taking every shot that the other team was giving them. But uh, in the end, 18 seconds left in the game, Vancouver gets the decisive goal and they go up one nothing. The Bruins and the, the Vancouver, you can see the legs were tired. These guys were battling. But you know, John, you got to give them a little props. And on my show... I'll give them the props. So there, on your show, you can tear them down. But John, 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 you're a sports guy. It's kind of like a, a musical group. You see collapse. If it's the same members, all right, you can take them to task. But this is a new goalie. Right? Well, you know, again, all that stuff's out the window so with these the things. You know, the last time they beat a team, a Canadian team, was in 1939, 1940 when they beat the, the, the Toronto Maple Leafs. And for, for the uh, 10 losses that they, that they got against Canadian teams in the Stanley Cup, which I found this very interesting, were well, against the, the Montreal Canadiens. And you believe that the Bruins and Canadians actually faced off on four different occasions. Okay, well, we've got a, a packed show tonight, but what I'd like to conclude on is in the Globe today, I did see that you were right on your blog last night. You put that the NFL might be at the bargaining table. Yeah, well, I, I mentioned that to you last night because uh, the, uh, they got a couple of the high-powered owners together to uh, talk with the players.
players in the, in the announcer punk union. It looks more and more. It's looking well. It's, the, the latest I heard today on that was that uh, they were in court, and uh, there was there was a uh, there was a motion to dismiss. But the judge uh, the judge said you brought this, so now uh, we gotta go through with it. You took up our court time, so now we gotta go through with it. So this this is gonna go through the court system, and of course we'll have to wait another month before the judges come down with the decision. So right now, it's, even with all this meeting that they did, there's still a very strong possibility that unless the judge rules in favor of the players, there will be no season. Well, well, we'll see how this transpires. And I'll leave you with a note about Medford News. There's a fellow, uh, is it Robert Caraviello? Yep. He's running for city council, and tomorrow night, Matt Habestro kicks off his campaign. John, I'm going to ask you a question. What do we do with these newcomers? How do we hold their feet to the fire so it's not just a lot of hot air? Well, you know, we talked about this today, and in the case of Mr. Habistro, he wants to claim the success for putting the access station here in Medford out of business, so to speak. But what he fails to realize is without you on the front lines first... And Pat Fiorello, we talked about Pat. Pat Fiorello, right? And then me joining late, my joining you was like a death knell to them because they thought they could keep me in check. But when they screwed me over like they did, and I went to what I like to call their enemy. <laughs> their enemy in a friendly way, he says that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, hey, it, we're only doing what's right, and there's a lot of people in the community calling me and talking to me, and they're all happy about our efforts. But these people running for office, we've got to hold their feet to the fire, that we need to have access as accessible as Stoneham, Winthrop, Winchester, Cambridge. It's just what, we, what we're paying for, what we deserve, Lexington.